finally. After 20 years, the world's first perfect matter energy converter. Let's test it out. Hello, I'm Tyler, this is the Imaginary Axis, and how do Pokeballs work? You know, Pokeballs. Those technological marvels from Nintendo that Pokemon trainers use to capture and store living creatures. They're mass-produced by companies like Silvco, Devon, or the Kalos Pokeball Factory. And according to Pokemon lore, the whole reason Pokemon are even called Pokemon is because we capture them in Pokeballs. Yeah, before these things existed, they were actually called Maju, or magical creatures. And while the verdict might still be out on how much of that is legit, Pokeballs are... odd, to say the least. They do some things that we just can't replicate with modern science. For instance, in a few interpretations, they basically act as a portable shrink ray. But perhaps even more impressively, the most common depiction shows Pokémon being completely converted into energy before stored on a trainer's belt. And that might be every ten-year-old's dream come true, but it's also every warlord's dream come true. Because, as we've discussed before, Einstein theorized with this equation that energy and mass are actually the same thing in different states. Which means, yes, with the right technology, we should be capable of turning a body of mass, like Pikachu, into pure energy. But take another look at that equation first. If the amount of energy in something is equal to its mass times the speed of light squared, then practically any reasonable mass you plug into the equation is going to release a ton of energy. Take Ghastly here, for instance. He's currently the lightest known Pokémon in existence, weighing in at just 0.2 pounds. But if we were to turn all of his mass into energy, it would still release a whopping 8.09 times 10 to the 15th joules. What does that mean? Well, if Ghastly was just floating along in the middle of New York City and you decided to convert all of his mass into energy, it would create an explosion roughly 100 times more powerful than the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. The fireball alone would be over three and a half miles in diameter, over 1.7 million people would be killed, and the air blast from the massive energy release would force almost every building from Manhattan to Brooklyn to collapse. If you're living on the east side of Queens, you might escape some of the third-degree burns that will permanently scar your skin and may require amputation. But that's all assuming we only use the lightest Pokémon, and fail to contain the energy. Fortunately for us, Pokéballs are all about containing things. Specifically, as some fans have pointed out, Pokéballs seem to resemble futuristic supercapacitors, far more efficient and capable versions of the capacitors we have today. You see them everywhere, in motors, computers, video game consoles. Capacitors use two conductors surrounding one non-conductive region to contain energy in the form of an electric field. And in the Pokeball's case, those two conductors are the metal shells of the ball, while the non-conductive region is... whatever the inside is made of. But don't take that as some kind of cop-out, because if I had to guess, different types of Pokeballs are probably made of different things. You see, that non-conductive region in the middle is known as a dielectric, and it can be... literally anything. But its efficiency is determined by how well it contains energy. Kind of like how literally anything can be a conductor, but it's only a good conductor if electricity can easily travel through it. Consider the typical Pokémon trainer's backpack. He probably keeps his fair share of Pokéballs, but there are Great Balls and Ultra Balls in there too. Capacitors with better dielectrics inside that can contain energy more efficiently and increase your chances of capturing a Pokémon. That's also why they cost more than the Pokéball. The material making up their dielectrics is in higher demand because it works better. The Master Ball is the most effective Pokéball in the entire game with a guaranteed 100% catch rate. Chances are it's so hard to get your hands on one of these because the non-conductive region is a perfect dielectric. Something that took years and years to develop and is capable of containing unfathomable amounts of energy. But it doesn't stop there. 
Throughout the Pokemon world, there are dozens of specialty Pokeballs for a variety of purposes. The Heavy Ball works better on heavier Pokemon, no doubt by using a Dielectric meant to contain more energy. The Friend Ball makes a Pokemon more content with their trainer upon being captured, probably by persuading a few neurons during the reconstruction process. And the Heal Ball fully restores a Pokemon's stats, probably because it's programmed to identify injuries and reconstruct the Pokemon without them. Oh right, speaking of which, each Pokeball is most likely outfitted with a tiny supercomputer. I mean, it has to be, otherwise it would never be capable of reconstructing all of the Pokemon's atoms exactly right. And you might not think that's a big deal, but if you want to deconstruct and reconstruct a Charizard, it would require around 4.5 times 10 to the 42 bits of data. That's far more information than we can collect and transmit today, but then again, an Apple iPhone 4S processes 800 times faster and holds at least 4,000 times more memory than the Apollo Guidance computer NASA used to land on the moon in 1969. So, yeah, like I said in the beginning, this technology is really beyond anything we have today. But the building blocks are there. Like a lot of famous sci-fi equipment, it's not completely fiction yet. And hey, I've waited 20 years for someone to make one of these things. I'm sure I can wait a few more. Especially if you're here to wait with me. So, thanks for taking the time to catch up with me today. I hope this quick run through one of my favorite franchises can keep you excited for the future. After all, there are plenty of other ways you could have chosen to spend the last few minutes, and, well, I want to be the very best.